My sister never took a breath. My daughter had no idea. There's no way she could have known that at four years old. Hey spooky siblings, welcome to Fear Fridays. Friday, Friday, gonna get spooked on Friday. Something, 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 weekend, weekend. That was Pulte, and I'm Red, and this is Left on Red. In today's episode, we will discuss true stories of reincarnation. First story. I spoke in full sentences from a very young age. One day my mother took me to a doctor's office for a checkup. And while she's waiting, she starts flipping through a magazine. She said it was like a National Geographic, but I've gone looking through all the issues of the years likely to be in a waiting room in the early 80s. And I'm confident it wasn't actually a National Geographic. Whatever it was, she was flipping through it. And with my little hands, I grabbed the thing, flipped back several pages frantically, and then I put my face like an inch above the page. I just froze there, poring over this picture of a ruined monastery in a desert drinking in every little detail. My mother can't remember whether it was Africa or the Middle East, unfortunately. Anyway, she asks me what I like so much about the picture. I used to live there, I said. She laughed. No, you've always lived with me. No, no, this was long time before you were born. I told her, waving one hand at her dismissively. So she pulls me back from the page and asks me, Well, what did you used to do when you lived there? Thinking this was one of those games that children play where they talk about being firefighters or construction workers or the like. She says, I told her. I wrote books and I grew vegetables. And my little finger pointed at an outbuilding of the monastery and an empty field behind it. Well, I'm speaking in full sentences, but I can't read yet. My mother said she got very cold and started shivering from head to toe. The caption of the photo was explaining that the monastery was nearly self-sufficient gathering rainwater in cisterns to support vegetable gardens year-round behind the scriptorium where the monks produce copies of the Bible and other holy books. She says she put down the magazine and walked out of the doctor's office with me in her arms. She rescheduled the appointment. It was just too creepy. Second story. When my daughter was around four, she began to talk about the lost time. She'd always say things like, yeah, but that's what happened last time, not now. When I was older than you, not when you were my mom. When talking about things she remembered. One day we were sitting on my bed having a random conversation before bedtime. She said something like, But I was your grandma then. I died before you were born, so I wanted to meet you. When your sister died, I had to wait until you had a daughter. I was a twin, but my twin was still born. My sister never took a breath. My daughter had no idea. There's no way she could have known 
that at four years old. Now, Pulte, I already know the answer to this question, but I have to ask for the sake of our listeners. If reincarnation is real, why haven't you and I reincarnated yet? Because we don't want to. The world is too polluted. Plus, I want to come back as a tiger, and humans are just not nice to them. Oh, I saw Tiger King. I know what y'all do. Plus, we have so many spooky tales and legends to uncover. At least a century worth of content. Like this next story. My three-year-old said, I was your mom in heaven multiple times. When I was six weeks pregnant with her, my mom died unexpectedly the day she found out the secret that I was pregnant at 40 with what would be her last and 21st grandchild. We were going to surprise her on her 75th birthday. Two weeks later, but a niece let the secret out. When my girl was four, we were looking through pictures boxes. I have no family pictures posted in my house. Later that night, I realized my little girl took three pictures of my mom and put them in her room. She's never seen pictures of my mom before. I asked her why she took those pictures and she said, because I'm pretty. Fourth story. My grandmother reluctantly told me how my uncle, who was around two or three at the time, described to her in great detail, skinning the white man. We are white. <laughs> what the heck? I mean, I guess, what did I tell you, Red? Human children are so creepy. But I thought you wanted to adopt a dozen black-eyed children, Pulte. Oh, no, 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 no. Black-eyed children are demonic creatures. Human children are just... <laughs> Gives me the jibblies. <laughs> Fifth story. I only ever shared with a few people how my late mother regularly hid a packet of biscuits, usually chocolate digestives, from my brothers and I, so when we had visitors, there was enough biscuits to go with a cup of tea, how it's done in Britain. I once caught my daughter stuffing a packet of biscuits in the back of a cupboard behind a big bag of pasta. At the time, I thought Crafty Cow wants them for herself, but left them there to see if they'd disappear. Maybe for a teaching moment about not being selfish or something. They didn't disappear, but reappeared when some friends came over. She just waltzed out of the kitchen, just as my mother used to, opening a packet of biscuits. She never knew my mother, and I'm pretty certain nobody else would have encouraged this pretty specific behavior. And that was Fear Fridays. My name is Red, and this is Left on Red. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and press the bell notification button so that you get notified every time Polti and I upload a new video. Until next time. Hey, spooky siblings. Scary. Monsters are real. Ghosts are real too. They live.